Dr. Kroll, I can hardly wait to hear about these five B's of being clean. Don, my plan is to consider three of the five B's today and the last two on our broadcast tomorrow. So, folks, if you can't be with us for tomorrow for some reason, why don't you consider ordering this entire series entitled Whatever Happened to Purity? Order it on cassette tape. Uh, that way you'll be sure not only to get the five B's of being clean, but the rest of the series about the importance of purity as well. Today, we're going to look at the first three of the five B's of being clean before God. Now, I want to address, first of all, why I even talk about the five B's of being clean. You remember from the last two days on this broadcast, Psalm 24, who is it who can ascend into the hill of the Lord? Who can stand before a holy God? The answer to that in verse 4 of Psalm 24 is, he who has clean hands and a pure heart. We are dedicating this entire week at Back to the Bible specifically to talking about having clean hands and a pure heart. Why is being clean so important? The Bible tells us we need to be clean because God is clean. The Bible tells us we need to be clean because the prerequisite for service is always cleanliness. Not talent, not ability, but cleanliness. And the Bible tells us that we need to be clean because it is also the prerequisite for our blessing. It's very important that you and I have our hands and our heart cleansed. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, here's the question. How on earth are you going to do that? How on earth are you going to remain clean? How on earth are you going to be clean before the Lord God? Well, that's a good question. This is where the rubber meets the road, folks. And I think the Bible not only poses good questions, it also poses very good answers to those questions. Today, I want us to look at three ways you can be clean before God. Tomorrow, we'll look at the last two. If you have that Bible in front of you and would like to follow along in 2 Samuel chapter 11, I want to read the first five verses to you. This is the story of David and Bathsheba and Uriah the Hittite. Where better to go in God's word to learn about being clean before God? Listen to this. Now it came to pass in the spring of the year, at the time when kings go out to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel. And they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to behold. So David sent and inquired about the woman. And someone said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Then David sent messengers and took her, and she came to him, and he lay with her, for she was cleansed from her impurity, and she returned to her, her house. And the woman conceived, so she sent and told David, and said, I am with child. Now, this is David's deepest sin. This is the deepest trouble David was ever in in his life. This is David's darkest hour. David wants to be clean after this happens, but at this point, all he wants is Bathsheba. Now, I think we can look at Bathsheba and David and Uriah the Hittite and learn something very important, and that is one of the B's of being clean before God is be careful what you see. You and I must be careful what we see. Isn't it true that David's sin began with simple sight? I mean, David got up one night, the battle was going well for them, but, you know, he's a good general, he's a good king, he's worrying about the battle. He gets up in the middle of the night and he's walking out on the rooftop. And he looks down over the rooftop to the houses below him. If you've been to Israel, you can see exactly how this would happen. Because on the south side of Jerusalem... You can see there the little village of Silwan, an Arab village in which houses are built one on top of the other, directly across the valley from where we believe David's city was located. Well, David looked down over one house to the other, and there he saw Bathsheba bathing. Now, I don't know why she was bathing on top of the house. That's not important at this point. What is important is the verb, David saw Bathsheba bathing. 
You see, if he had not seen her bathing, he would have prevented this great sin. I think it's important, folks, that you and I recognize that one of the B's of being clean before God is to be careful what you see. Now, it's true, isn't it, that we can't always be careful what we see? I mean, David was innocent in this place. He didn't go out looking for Bathsheba. He accidentally saw her. But sometimes accidents happen on purpose, don't they? You're in a motel room. You're flipping through the channels on television. You need to be careful what you see, my friends. Job 31, verse 1. When Job was an old man, Job said, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a young girl. Now, this is an old man talking here. This is not the sins of his youth. These are the kinds of things that plague us all the days of our lives. Do you really want to be clean before God? If you have a desire to have an intimate relationship with God and be clean before him, to have clean hands and a pure heart, you must be careful what you see. Long before the advent of television, long before the days of Jay Leno and David Letterman, philosopher Soren Kierkegaard wrote this. Now listen. He said, suppose someone invented an instrument a convenient little talking tube, which, say, could be heard all over the whole land. I wonder if the police would not forbid it, fearing that the whole country would become mentally deranged if it were used. Now, <laughs> folks, Kierkegaard was talking long before television was invented. He's saying, supposing somebody invented a talking tube that you could see all over the land, wouldn't the police forbid it? fearing that the whole country would be mentally deranged? Now, today, I believe what the philosopher Kierkegaard was saying has already come true. We're very concerned today about the link between violence on television and in the movies and violence in life. How many times in the last few years have we witnessed reports on television of people Young teenagers, preteens going to their school, gunning down their classmates and their teachers and copying the violence they've seen on television. Sex and violence are the two issues with TV today. And I have to tell you, friends, one of the ways you can be clean before God is just to be careful what you see on television. You know, David Frost, who has made his living on television, David Frost said that television is an invention that permits you to be entertained in your living room by people you wouldn't have in your home. And he's absolutely right. Be careful what you see. We invite into our lives the kinds of people that we would not invite into our home because we invite them by television. Now, I'm not just picking on television today. You know that's true. You know that ordinarily I tell you that you can use television or radio or any of these grand inventions. You can use it for good or you can use it for evil. But anymore, most of what we see on television, most of what is seen in videos, most of what is seen on the movie screen is really not fit for human consumption, let alone for a Christian. We must be careful what we see. Somebody sent this to me. I don't know where it came from. It's a parody on the 23rd Psalm about television. The TV is my shepherd. My spiritual growth shall want. It maketh me to sit down and do nothing for his name's sake. It keepeth me from doing my duty as a Christian because it presenteth so many good programs that I must see. It restoreth my knowledge of the things of this world and keepeth me from the study of God's word. It leadeth me into the paths of failing to attend the evening church services and doing nothing for the kingdom of God. Yea, though I live to be one hundred, I shall keep viewing my TV so long as it shall work, for it is my closest companion. Its sounds and its pictures, they comfort me. He presenteth entertainment before me and keepeth me from doing important things with my family. It filleth my head with ideas which differ from those in the word of God. Surely no good thing will come of my life because of so many wasted hours, and I shall dwell in my regrets and remorse forever. Hey, there's a lot of truth to that, isn't there? 
If you want to be clean today, friends, you must be careful what you see. That's the first B of cleanliness before God. Uh, Let's go to Judges chapter 15. We'll see another B of B cleanliness, and that is be careful where you go. Not only must you be careful what you see, but you must be careful where you go. Judges chapter 15 at verse 14. Now, this is the story of Samson. This is a man who was a great champion for God and a real jerk at the same time. Listen to this, chapter 15, verse 14. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines came shouting against him. Then the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the ropes that were on his arms became like flax that is burned with fire. And his bonds broke loose from his hands. He found a fresh jawbone of a donkey. Reaching out his hand, he took it and killed a thousand men with it. Now that's the good times of Samson. He was bound with ropes, and yet he broke those ropes, and he killed a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of an ass. That's chapter 15. Listen to this. This is chapter 16, verse 1. Then Samson went to Gaza and saw a harlot there, and went into her. Now, I have to stop here, friends. Just moments ago, I said, be careful what you see. Samson saw a harlot, and so he paid her for sex. But notice also that he saw her in Gaza. Now, Gaza was one of the Philistine cities. Samson had absolutely no business in this Philistine city. He did not be careful where he went. But he went to Gaza, he saw the harlot, he went to her. The Gazathites were told, Samson has come. They surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the gate of the city. They were quiet at night, saying, in the morning, when it is daylight, we will kill him. Now, Samson was not killed, as you know from the story, but instead he went to the valley of Sorek, and there he met a woman named Delilah. Now, what is Samson's problem here? Samson's problem is he went all the wrong places. He went to the Valley of Sorek. He went to Gaza. He heard of a woman in Timnah, a daughter of the Philistines. He wanted her for his wife, so he demanded that his parents get her for his wife. That's chapter 14. So in chapter 14, there's one woman. In chapter 15, there's a second. Chapter 16, there's a third. Samson was not very careful where he went and what he saw. And therefore, he was not clean. Now, is there something you and I can learn from this? Oh, there sure is. It's the first two of the five B's of being clean before God. Number one, be careful what you see. Don't let come into your eyes those things that are going to ruin your mind and destroy your life. Secondly, be careful where you go, because wherever you go, you're going to see things you ought not see. And if you go the wrong places, you're going to see the wrong things. That's why 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, Paul tells young Timothy, flee youthful lusts and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. See the difference between lusting and having a pure heart? It's where you go. And it's what you see. Flee youthful lust and follow righteousness. Do it with those who have a pure heart. You want to be clean before the Lord God today? Well, you can be clean, but you must be careful. In order to be clean, you must be careful what you see. And you must be careful where you go. Now, I know that's pretty sound advice, and it's pretty basic advice. The only problem is nobody seems to take that advice. That's what God's Word says. It's the secret, friend, to being clean before God. When will we learn if we take God's Word seriously? It doesn't have to be difficult to understand. We just have to read it and believe it and apply it to our lives. The five B's of being clean before God. Number one, be careful what you see. Number two, be careful where you go. Here's number three. Be careful what you want. Be careful what you desire. Be careful what you're living your life for. Be careful what it is that you're after. Let me take you back to just the passage I referred to a moment ago. Judges 14, verse 1. Now Samson went down to Timnah and saw a woman in Timnah, 
of the daughter of the Philistines. So he went up and told his father and mother, saying, I have seen a woman in Timnah of the daughter of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me as a wife. Then his father and mother said to him, Is there no woman among the daughters of your brethren or among the people that you must go and get a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said to his father, now listen to this, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. Now at this point, I think what Manoah should have done was he should have manhandled Samson a bit, don't you? But Samson demanded of his father, and he says, Get her for me, because she pleases me. The father and mother did not discipline Samson. They simply allowed him to have what he wanted. And any child that is given what that child wants is headed in the wrong direction. Because the heart is deceitful, friends, even the tiny little heart of a child. You must be careful what you want, because if God allows you to have what you want, it likely will destroy you. You know, the greatest achievements in life are usually accomplished by people who have a singular desire that becomes a passion for all that they do. Uh, For example, do you remember the name Bob Feller? Bob Feller, when he was a child, loved to throw a baseball. By the time he was five, he had spent hours every day pitching through a hole in a barn wall. And at age 10, his father bought him all the necessary equipment, provided him with a playing field on the family farm. By age 13, Bob Feller pitched for a local team. He averaged 20 strikeouts a game. At age 13... By age 17, he began playing for the Cleveland Indians at age 17. As a major leaguer, Bob Feller had six seasons as a 20-game winner. He had three no-hit games. He had 11 one-hitters. He had 266 wins in his career, and he set a record of 348 strikeouts in one season. Bob Feller is a member of the Baseball Hall of Fame. And partly that's due to his abilities, but greatly it's due to the fact that he had one desire, and that desire was baseball. Now, what is the one desire in your life? What is it that drives your life? What is it that you want to do? You see, you have to be careful what you want, friends, because often what you and I want, we get. And if our desire is for this life, if our desire is for the temporary things of life, if our desire is to become rich, the chances are pretty good we'll make a lot of money in our lives. And we're going to lose it all and leave it all behind. But if our desire is to be clean before God, if our desire is to have clean hands and a pure heart, as Psalm 24 verse 4 tells us, if we want to live a life of purity, I want you to know it's possible. It's possible if you do three things. Number one, be careful what you see. If you want to live a life of purity, don't let come into your eyes or your ears, into your mouth, those things that will defile the body. It is absolutely essential. You're careful what you see. Secondly, be careful where you go. If you know sin is there, my friend, get out of there. The wisest person I know is not the person who falls into sin and then has to confess it, and everybody applauds his confession. The wisest person I know is the one who stays away from sin in the first place. And then thirdly, if you want to be clean before God, be careful what you want. Because what you and I thirst after, likely we will ultimately receive. As the deer pants after the water brooks, so my soul pants after thee. Oh God, do you really want to be clean today? You want to live a life of purity before God? You can. Just be careful. Thank you for listening to Back to the Bible. Join us again tomorrow. God bless you.